approximately spherical halo. So you have the, the Milky Way disk made of ordinary matter, and you have this halo of dark matter that surrounds it. And that's not just true in the Milky Way galaxy. There's many galaxies that look like this. But let's focus on uh, the Milky Way, since we, of course, care about our own stuff the most. Um, so why is there a disk of ordinary matter? Though? That's an interesting question. It's actually relevant to the dark matter story I'm about to tell you. Well, the reason ordinary matter is in a disk is because it interacts with light. And because it interacts with light, it can radiate. And when it radiates, it can cool down. And when it cools down, it can collapse into a disk. So you have ordinary matter that's collapsed into this disk. So you have the spherical hail of dark matter, and you have the disk of ordinary matter that sits inside. And so that's why ordinary matter seems to be much more substantial. I mean, in addition to the fact that it's interacting, in the region that we're seeing, <coughs> Ordinary matter is denser, so we have much more ordinary matter here. But there is a lot more dark matter, because, but it's mostly spread out in a much larger region. So again, having told the story of dark matter, I like to think of dark matter as sort of an unsung hero. Um, you know, people are mystified by it, but again, the history of physics is learning about a lot of things that we don't see. And so I kind of um, have a lot of social analogies in my book. And, and dark matter lends itself very nicely to those. Um, but it's like the unseen masses of society who you know, build bridges and houses and construct hardware. We focus on the leaders and celebrities, the stuff that we readily see. Um, but actually, these are essential to everything that's going on, and there's a lot more of them. And so dark matter is kind of like that. It formed the scaffolding of our universe. Um, really, as I said, structure only formed because dark matter, first of all, there was a lot more matter because of the existence of dark matter, and also because it didn't interact with light which allowed it to collapse into structure. So really, the reason um, ordinary matter is here is because it sort of hitchhiked along with the dark matter. The dark matter sort of formed the structure, and ordinary matter sort of came along for the ride. Which is actually an important observational thing, because it's the reason that dark matter and ordinary matter are found in roughly the same region. And ordinary matter sort of lights up the region on the whole where dark matter is, because they were sort of gravitationally focused in the same regions. But as I said, although we know all of this, and it is an amazing story, and it really is, I mean, this is just part of the story, and if, you know, the entire first section of the book is about cosmology and how structure forms and what dark matter is. Um, and it's an, it is an amazing story. We understand this 13.8 billion years of history very well. But of course, there are some outstanding questions. Namely, what is this dark matter made of? And what do I mean by that? Well, as a particle physicist, we'd like to know, first of all, is dark matter made up of elementary particles? And if so, what is the mass of those particles? Do those particles carry charges of any sort? Do they interact with ordinary matter, even at some small level? Do they interact with themselves? But another question you can ask is, is it even one kind of particle? Or are there all sorts of different particles? After all, if we looked at ordinary matter and assumed if you were a dark person, and you looked at ordinary matter and assumed it was one type of particle, you'd be very wrong. Because ordinary matter is made up of quarks, it's made up of electrons, made up of muons, it's all sorts of different particles that exist in the world of ordinary matter. Maybe dark matter is like that too. Maybe it's not just one kind of particle. Um, but dark matter isn't the only question. Of course, we want to know, understand dark energy better. We want to understand why the amount of dark energy is what it is. And even ordinary matter, even atoms, which we think we understand very well, we understand the elementary particles of which it's made, there's still a big outstanding question about atoms. Namely, um, why are they here? In the sense of, if there had been the same amount of matter and antimatter, antimatter is the stuff that carries opposite charges and can annihilate with ordinary matter to form pure energy, it would all be gone by now. If we had started off with matter and antimatter in equal amounts, at this point, we would have basic, essentially no matter left at all. Yet we are left with a substantial amount of, of matter. That means somewhere in the evolution of the universe, um, matter came to dominate over antimatter. It's what we call it matter-antimatter asymmetry. And how that came about is, again, one of the outstanding questions that we as cosmologists are asking. But the question I'm going to focus on today, and I, I focus a lot on this book, but um, is the question of dark matter. And the reason for that is I actually think um, it's one of the areas of research where we're really poised to make progress for two reasons. One is that there really are a lot of observations and experiments going on today that are teaching us more and more about observationally what dark matter can and cannot be. By doing better measurements, even if we don't find it, we have 
stronger constraints on what it can be. And the other reason is because of research like the research that I'm telling you about, um, which, I mean, I'm a theoretical physicist. I don't actually do the messy work of doing the observations. I care about the observations, but I don't have to do them. But I do think about um, what dark matter could be, what are models of dark matter, and how you could test those models. After all, these are very precise and very difficult and challenging experiments. So it really helps to have an idea of what you think it can be when you do these experiments, because if you don't, then you're not going to find it. So, but there are many new ideas for what dark matter can be, and I think um, there's really been a lot of work in the theoretical community with new possibilities. So I just feel like it's a place where we're making a lot of progress, and although we don't know what it is yet, we'll know a lot more in the next few years. <laughs>